Welcome to the first fire capture tutorial. As you may hear, I'm not a native English speaker, so I really hope you will be able to understand me. Um, today I'd like to show you the basic steps in installing fire capture and give some hit tips for, for troubleshooting. So to install fire capture, go to the website, scroll down a bit and you will find the download links here. This download here is um, the current official version, which is for the moment version 2.3. Um, during development, I of the, during development of the next version, I usually put a link here for the for the next version, which is a beta status, so the user can test it and get some feedback. Because I'd like to show version 2.4 in this tutorial, I go to the download here, and here comes the first trick. This is a protected download, so you need to read what's written here before clicking on the download. So you need to insert a user and a password in order to get it downloaded. So please read here what to do in order to get it downloaded. So download it and execute the, the installer. Okay, it, this is a self-extracting zip package. So you need to say where you want to have the files. So select the destination folder where you want to put the folder in. So I'm going to put this to C, Programs, and Demo. Okay, extract it. So it takes a moment. Okay, remember the folder where you put the files in and open the folder in the Windows Explorer. So you see a new folder fire capture here. So this is the content of the program. So it's important to know that this isn't a usual Windows installation, it's just a folder. So you won't see fire capture in the in the list of installed window programs. So um, there are no system installations or registry settings, it's just a folder. So that means also you can have multiple fire capture versions installed in parallel, so these are only folders. And if you are done with it, you can simply remove the folder. That's all you have to do to, to delete it. Okay, um, first step, you have installed fire capture, but this doesn't necessarily mean you have the, the latest version running. So the first step would be um, uh, chain, uh, connecting to the update server and check for updates. Um, because I'm sitting behind a, a firewall, I need to insert a proxy here. Okay, starting fire capture. And the first first start, um, it extracts some files, so it takes a moment. Okay, it starts. Um, I'm I don't show you anything of the user interface for the moment, so just ignore these things. I'm go to exit the camera dialog interface and go to play with the dummy cam in order to get it open. So I will cover the user interface in a later tutorial. So I'm just trying to show you the software update. So scroll down a bit and open the settings. So just click on one of these settings buttons, and in the settings dialog, scroll down. The latest entry is software update. So check, start that button, so it connects to the server and checks if there are any updates. So you see, I have currently version 2.4.5 build and the uh, server states there is a new build available. Um, you can read them, some version histories here and just click on that button again to update new version. So it updates the files and um, it's finished. So you need to manually restart fire capture in order, to in order to take changes effect. So close it and start it again. Again, we play dummy cam. So you see now we have version 2.46. So checking again. There is uh, no updates available when you're running the latest version. So now we have uh, the latest version, and um, that's always the first step after installing. So we ensure you have the latest bug fixes in and um, so on. So um, 
I'm going to close it again and I'd like to give you some troubleshooting tips for the for some of the most probably errors you have to struggle with. So first of all, Java uh, um, Firecapt is a Java program, so it obviously needs a Java runtime environment. So this Java runtime environment is bundled with with Fire Capture, so there is no need to install a separate Java on on your machine. So it's all bundled all together with Fire Capture. So one thing is uh, when it starts, it allocates a specific amount of of memory. So by default, it the Java memory allocates one gigabyte of uh, of RAM. So that works. This works for nearly all machines, but on some uh, low memory old machines, you may have run we may run into troubles with with this configuration. Just to give you an example of how this looks like, I'm going to change here the heap size to a much too high value. So when it started again, it will give you some an, an error like could not create trouble with the machine, which usually means there's not enough heap size you it could allocate. So if you see some kind of sys error, that means you have not enough memory to give the one gigabyte default heap size. So what you could do then is uh, to figure out first um, what memory, what, what heap size it could take. So you can start file capture debug, which opens a, a DOS box where you can insert any RAM heap space and figure out if it works. So let's say you insert 512 megabytes. If it starts, okay, this is the case, it starts, okay, exit and change the shortcuts here, change the properties. So this is all German, but I may you, you figure it out how to change. So you need to change the heap size here. Instead of one gig, we are going to use 512 megabytes. So we need to edit both entries here. These are just uh, heap size parameters for, for the Java virtual machine. So just insert 512 for both entries. And now it starts fire capture with 512 megabytes. So that's a thing you would have to do if you experience some kind of, of startup error as shown before. Okay. These are the very first basic steps in installing it. Okay, let's go to connecting cameras. So, before you trying to connect any cameras, please uh, check on the Fire Capture website if you need any specific software development kit for it. For some camera interfaces, um, you need some special SDKs in order to get it working with Fire Capture. So, in the list here. You see, this is an overview of what software development kits you, the, the, some some camera cameras need. So, um, especially for the Basler cameras, you need the Pylon SDK in that specific version. For Point Grey, you need the um, Fly Capture SDK. It's important to know that um, Fire Capture is a 32-bit application, so you need for Point Grey cameras a 32-bit Fly Capture SDK as well. Um, you may need, you can install both, but 32 and 64 bit, but you need the 32 bit fly capture SDK. That's important. Otherwise, it won't start your, your point gray cameras. For other interfaces, um, like the imaging source or the uh, ZVO ASI or QHY, you don't need any specific software development kit. All the necessary files are, are bundled with, with fire capture, so you don't need to to install it, anything special for, for those cameras. Um, I'd like to show you the Point Grey installation and some give you some tips of what how the, how the error looks like if you don't have installed the, the, the SDK. Um, I'm just going to simulate and not installed um, fly capture. Um, as you see here, if you install Fly Capture SDK, it creates a folder Point Grey Search and Fly Capture 2. And usually for the 32-bit applica 
32 bit SDK, there is a folder bin. I change this to bin blah blah, and uh, that means Fire Capture will not find the related, uh, the necessary dependent library. So, if I'm going to start the point gray camera now, you will see Fire Capture doesn't find the necessary libraries. It gives you an, an, an a tip here with, with explaining what you have to, to install. And if you exit and take a look at the log files, you will see there was an error that it couldn't find the dependent libraries. So that is um, important to know that you need to install the Fly Capture 32 um, SDK in order to get it running. Um, the Fly Capture uh, uh, installation usually um, adjusts uh, the path system environment variable to the folder where the, the Fly Capture SDK is, is sitting. So usually this works, but user reported that this doesn't seem to to work every time. So even if you install the Fly Capture SDK, it might not find the related SDK because simply the path environment variable isn't adjusted. So you can you can check this by by starting uh, a DOS box here and in the the path to show the path environment. And as you see here, it has sitting the it has an entry pointing to the Fly Capture bin. In folder, and that's what it needs in order to see the related uh, libraries. So, if this isn't the case, it won't start your cameras even if you have installed Fly Capture SDK. So, in this case, I can you can go to the bin folder and copy the Fly Capture 2 DLL into the Fire Capture folder and in this case, it should start the camera. So that's the workaround for the for problems that may occur if the Fly Capture SDK is not is, isn't installed correctly. So that's uh, things you should know about the point gray interface. Um, I'd like to. Give some more tips um, regarding uh, ASI and QHY cameras. Um, okay, let's first start with the QHY camera. There isn't an, uh, anything special files needed for QHY. It should start right out of the box. So, if you experience, if you get some problems with um, max frame size. Um, if you have problems to get the maximum uh, frame rate for, for the camera, you may need to check the, the high speed option. So, if you click on the more here, on the more button, it opens the additional camera control. So you can click on, you can, you must select high speed in order to get the full frame rate for the camera. That's important to know for the QHY cameras. Okay, I'm going to switch now the camera to ASI to show you some most common problems related to ASI camera. Okay, I connected it and I start the ASI. Okay, um, there is another control, an important control for ASI cameras, which is called USB traffic. That is uh, yeah, a slider that um, controls the, the bandwidth used of the uh, USB bus. So if that value is too high, you really get some problems with frame with frame display. So usually you will see a message uh, capture failed over here, which is displayed in red here. If you see this this error, you need to reduce the USB traffic value. As you see, I'm running 100 and max here now because I'm my my USB port on the machine is pretty fast, but if on some machines you may have to reduce this value a lot. So in order to get rid of these capture failed methods, that's important to know for for ASI cameras. Okay, um, 
these are the most important things to know regarding fire capture installation. Um, I hope um, that was informative for you. So, hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you next time. Bye.